Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 18 July 2024, Thursday night at 9 o'clock. Must be time for a knife sale, so I think we'll have one. Before I get into the meat of it, let's do a little bit of housekeeping as usual. First off, I need you to be familiar with and agreeable to the terms of the sale. I'm going to post them on the screen for you in just a moment. I will also print them in the description underneath this video so you can peruse them at your leisure and make sure you understand them and concur with them. Also in the description, above the terms of the sale, you're going to see three links to previous videos on the channel. The first is entitled A Primer for Buyers. That's a 38-minute expanded explanation of the terms of the sale. So it's a good idea, especially if you're new, that you watch that. It will give you a very good grasp on how we do things and why every Thursday night. <clears throat> so in that all-important video description, at the top you'll see the three links, a primer for buyers, FAQs for consigners, and my rates and services video to the Apostle P. Knife Service. Then you'll see the terms of the sale, and at the bottom you're going to see the list of tonight's inventory, complete with timestamps on the left, pricing on the right. Now in the pricing column, you're generally going to see two numbers. The number to the left of the slash will be the price of your knife as shown in the video, the price on the right as sharpened by the Apostle P. Knife Service. Uh, speaking of sharpening, there will be next day sharpening this week for the first three knives purchased to be sharpened. Those will ship tomorrow, Friday the 19th along with all the as shown knives. And if you fall outside the first three, not to worry, only gonna be two to three weeks before your sharpened knife ships. If you see the word sold in lieu of pricing in that far right column, that means the knife you're looking at has been bought and paid for by its new owner. No need to send an inquiry or an I'll take it about anything marked sold, all caps, exclamation point. I think that's it for the preliminaries. Let's get the terms up on the screen for you and we'll be right back with the sale. Here are the terms. All right, let's get to it, shall we? First up, we gotta get uh, three leftovers from last week sold. We're gonna start it out with this one from Bark River Knives. It is the JX6 in Magna Cut with black canvas micarta handle designed by Chris Tanner of Prepared Mind 101. Here you go. It's going to come in a pancake style sheath that is slightly convertible. It'll go, it will go vertical or it will go cross draw on either side. Here is the knife. It's a little swash buckling all purpose kind of EDC or camp knife. The JX6 features a blade three and a half inches in length. And it is in CPM Magna Cut. Uh -huh. There's your black canvas micarta handle, which is three and 13 sixteenths inches in length. It is just the perfect size. All four fingers on the knife. Great. In that overhand grip great in a pinch grip mm -hmm. kind of saber convex ground now this has been user sharpened convexly pretty sharp I could probably do a little better I will give you a sharpen price but don't think it really has to be done so these are out of stock currently when they were available retail in this sort of base configuration this knife would have run about 245 we ran it last week at 190, dropped it to 170 for the weekend. It's still here, so let's go 155 like it is 185 with my edge on that Magna Cut blade. That is the Bark River JX6. Next up, got a Sprint Run Para 2 from Spyderco. Uh -huh. It says neon green and black. Well, that's a pretty good descriptor because it is neon green and black. Neon green G10 handle, all black hardware DLC blade, <coughs> wearing a black Casey Lynch deep carry titanium clip. I don't think we have the original for this knife. 
Action is stunning. You've got a three and a half inch blade or thereabouts, four and 13 16 handle. What I like to call the Spidey Clip profile. <laughs> Your blade steel CPM 20 CV. Rock solid lockup, free drop in action. And how's the centering on this one? Well, it's about dead perfect. Mm -hmm. We will say the condition is near mint in box just because of the clip swap. Uh, these are gone uh, in the new market. I did see one sold on eBay recently, and it was a best offer accepted at a buy it now of 266. So eh, who knows, 240, 250 probably. We offered this one last week at 200 bucks, didn't sell, dropped it to 180 for the weekend. Still here, let's go 165, like it is 195 with my edge. Next day sharpening is available. That is the Spyderco Para 2 Neon Green DLC and 20 CV. Next up, time for the Emerson party to start, and we're going to do it with a leftover from last week. It says it is the Elvia BT from Emerson. And here it is. It is a swayback hawkbill or folding karambit scaled in that Emerson Black G10. <clears throat> You've got the Reaper clip, which is a factory clip and an option when ordering this knife. Opens with a thumb disc. Also has the Reaper on the blade. That blade is two and three quarters inches of 154 cm, Emerson's preferred steel over the years. So I believe this knife is designed to be held in this grip, sort of a reverse grip, index finger in the depression. Kind of a ripper, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Titanium liner lock as usual, normal Emerson construction, Nylatron washers. Blade centering on this one is right down the middle. Mm -hmm. Lockup is rock solid. Just a little bit of Emerson stick. Condition on the Elvia will be near mint in box. Uh, these are out of stock, sold listings on eBay, ranging between 258 and 338. So among the crowd who would actually use a knife, this they seem to be pretty desirable. We ran this one last week at 225, dropped it to 195 for the weekend. It is still here. Let's go 175 like it is, 205 with an Apostle P edge. That is the Emerson Elvia BT. <clears throat> Next up, another one from Emerson. This is an interesting knife. It is the Hybrid SF in gray. It comes two ways, gray G10 and black G10. We've got a gray one. Did a little bit of looking on Emerson's website, and it's called a hybrid, and the, the marketing copy on the website is a little vague. It's called the hybrid because, because it comes from several parents. And I didn't do enough research in preparation for the sale to tell you which knives this is a combination of, but it kind of looks like a Kershaw handle, which would make sense. And it's kind of a standard Emerson Tonto blade, complete chisel grind, totally flat on the backside. And if you look closely, Ernest Emerson Signature. This is a Signature Series knife. You've got a 3 and 7 16 inch blade in 154cm. Just look at the by finish light play on that thing. Yeah. And then the handle is 5 and 3 16 So tons of real estate on that handle, and it really presents the blade well. <clears throat> Titanium liner lock mechanism, Nylatron washers. Lockup is rock solid. Just that little bit of Emerson stick. Nice free blade on this one. I'm going to call the centering close. It's always hard to judge on a chisel ground knife because that one side sits so flat up against the uh, liner. But 
It's close. I don't think it's perfect. I think it favors the top just a little bit. We'll call it near mint in box. These are out of stock uh, on Emerson's website, and they seem to have gone away from their retailers, it seems. When they were available, they were $2.92 web retail. There are none of these being bought and sold on the secondary market. I could find zero used price references. So let's go $2.30 like it is. $2.60 if you'd like my edge on that Tonto blade. That's the Emerson Signature Series Hybrid SF in gray. Next up. This is an Emerson I've never seen. It's called the <coughs> CQC 17. SF. So when you look at it, it doesn't look like a CQC7 in any way, shape, or form, because it's not. It's a CQC17. You've got the large Parkerized Emerson clip mounted for right-hand tip-up carry, thumb disc opening. It opens beautifully. It's got kind of a little mini cleaver blade in 154 cm, three and an eighth inches in length. The handle four and a quarter fairly economical blade to handle ratio for an Emerson in the hand. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Loves to be pinched. <laughs> There's your lock engagement on the titanium liner lock. It is rock solid. The action on the Nylatron washers. It's kind of Emersony. <laughs> so it's not a free dropper, but it flicks out very nicely with the disc. Blade centering is what? How could it be? It's perfect. We'll call this knife near mint in box. Web retail for these, $249. let us run this one at $185 like it is. $210 if you like it with an Apostle P edge. That's the Emerson CQC 17 SF. Next up, we have another Emerson from the Signature Series. It is the Bitter Creek SF, a very interesting knife. And you notice 0041, so it's a serialized knife, number 41 of 63, and I think we'll see that somewhere on the blade. Here's the handle in that shiny new Emerson G10. I love if you hold it just right in the light, you can see the stripes, almost like Geneva striping on a watch. Pretty cool. Large handle, Parkerized standard Emerson clip with that deeply stamped Emerson Maker's Mark right hand tip up only. Doesn't open with a disc, but a single thumb stud or a wave. Let's see. Ooh, comes out nice. Got a Persian style blade in 154 cm. 3 and 15 16 inches of nasty right there. So, V ground primary bevels, chisel ground edge. Titanium liner lock, nice and solid. Rock solid. Tiny bit of Emerson stick. Very free action on the Nylatron washers. Flicks out beautifully with no wrist. Blade centering. Holy moly. How can it be? Another perfectly centered Emerson. Condition on this one, we're going to say near mint to like new in box number 41 of 63. Let's see. Let me show you Ernie's signature. There it is. And there it is. 41 of 63 right underneath the thumb stud. So these are discontinued out of stock. I couldn't even find a price for this knife on Emerson's website. Um, and there are none being traded. No sold listings on eBay. No forum listings. Kind of a rare knife. Let's do 240 like it is, 265 with an Apostle P Edge. The Emerson Signature Series Bitter Creek SF. Next up. <clears throat> Another one from Emerson. Seems like we've sold a couple of these in the last few months. It's the Persian SF or the PTAC. 
which will be easier to find it if you're looking one up. You've got black Emerson G10 with that Geneva stripe shimmer. Big knife, guys. You got five and a half inches of handle. Right hand tip up Parkerized Emerson clip. Thumb disc opening. Whoops. Oh, it's going to be easy. There we go. A skinny Persian blade on this one. Four inches in length. Titanium liner lock. Locking up right there. Nylatron washers. Not quite a free dropper. And what? All these Emersons are like beautifully centered. Look at that. Nice. Condition on the P-Tac. Near mint in box. These are out of stock <clears throat> in stonewash finish. You can buy one in the thunderstorm finish for $305. When the stonewash ones were available, they were $295. On this one, let's do $195 like it is. $220 with an Apostle P Edge. That's the Emerson Persian P Tac SF. Next up. Oh. I think this is the coolest Emerson in the sale. Here you go. <clears throat> this is the Raven B in black G10. Um, I believe we sold a Raven A last week with the OD green polymer handle. This one is not polymer. Look at this. This is the fluted black G10. Man, is that cool. I mean, that is a cool texture. Standard Emerson Parkerized clip, right hand tip up. Thumb disc deployment. Yeah. And a thunder, <laughs> excuse me, a thunderstorm finish blade, Tonto. In 154 cm, it's three and three eighths inches of blade, five inches of handle. Titanium liner lock. Locks up kind of late on this one, but it's probably not going anywhere. And centering again, we've got a fully chisel ground blade, so it's very hard to judge, but I'm going to call it close, not perfect. We'll say it's near mint to like new in box. These are discontinued, out of stock, and good luck finding one because this is the only one I've ever seen, even in pictures. For that reason, let's do $250 like it is, $280 with an Apostle Piaget. That is, by the way, $10 bucks less than we sold the polymer handled one last week. That's the Emerson Raven BTF. Next up is our final Emerson tonight. No, it's not. Because we've got, it's not. Here we go. This is a cool knife. The Yangtze Jack SF. I think named after the river. Is it in Japan? I don't, I, don't, I think, I don't know. Black G10. Parkerized Emerson clip. Very narrow closed profile in the pocket. Thumb disc deployment. Oh, nice. Nice little elegant drop point blade. V ground bevels, chisel ground edge bevel. Titanium liner lock on Nylatron washers. There's your lock engagement. Just tiny stick, nice free action. Look at that centering. Huh? Huh? Nice. Nice. Uh, Definitely near mint in box. These are out of stock when they're available. They were 230 web retail. Let's do 170 on this one. 195 if you'd like it with my edge and next day sharpening is available. This might be the best EDC Emerson I've ever had in my hand. It's just economical in hand, in pocket, nice blade shape for utility. Cool knife, the Yangtze Jack SF. And that brings us to our final Emerson in the sale tonight. <clears throat> and this doesn't look like any Emerson box I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's a fixed blade. 
Now this is a Scottish pattern and my buddy Uncle Jesse Hemphill who has made several versions of this knife in a custom fashion told me how to pronounce this. Let's see if I can do it. Skin do. I believe that's pretty close. Cool, cool knife. <clears throat> it comes in an Emerson branded pancake style leather sheath. At the bottom, we have a little pass through because there's a beaded chain just in case you want to carry it via the neck. Uh -huh. And this is a Scottish pattern and I'm not sure what it's called but it sure looks cool on a skeleton handle knife and it gives a little purchase. So anywho, we got a blade 154 cm and I measured it two and five eighths to the front of the hole, okay? And then measuring from the front of the hole back, three and five sixteenths inches of handle. Emerson calls these rough finish flats. I'm not sure if that's just heat treat scale or if there's been some kind of post heat treat treatment done to the handle, but it's kind of smoky. Then you've got V ground primary bevels and a chisel ground edge bevel. If I didn't mention it, it's 154 CM. Uh, it is like new in the box. These are out of stock when they were available brand new. You could buy them for 170 online. Let's do this one at 125, like it is 150 with my edge. The Emerson Skin Dupe Fixed Blade. Next up, we have a little uh, a little run of arachnids coming at you. First one from Golden, Colorado, USA Earth. Paramilitary 2, CPMM4 Tonto, the box says. Yeah. Blade HQ exclusive, Jade G10. Casey Lynch deep carry titanium pocket clip goes in all four positions. The blade is that thing. Look at that work. That's the Glesser saying, Ernie's not the only one who can make a badass Tonto blade. Look at that thing in CPM M4. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? CPM M4. About three and a half inches of blade, compression lock mechanism, of course, free dropping action on phosphor bronze washers. Blade centering is, come on, let me get an angle that you can see it. Come on, there you go. It's perfect. Lock up, rock solid. Uh -huh. Condition. I'm going to say near mint to like new in box. It, let's see. I don't think I have a factory clip for this. I do not. Uh -huh. But other than that, they're discontinued and out of stock. Sold listings on eBay vary wildly from 212 to 450. This being a pretty much perfect example mechanically, let's do it at. 220 like it is 255 if you'd like it with my edge on that tanto blade and be clear in your i'll take it because i got another one very similar so it's going to say spider co para 2 tanto jade satin m4 next up i will reveal why that specificity is so important spider co made in usa paramilitary 2 cpm m4 black tanto so basically the same knife as the last one, natural or jade G10 scales, black hardware, black Casey Lynch deep carry titanium clip, and a DLC coated Tonto blade in CPM M4. A hydraulically free dropping action. Perfect lockup. And let's see, perfect centering. Uh huh. Condition will be like near mint to like new in box only because of the clip swap and there is no original clip. <clears throat> 
So let's see. Discontinued. Out of stock. Unobtainium. I could find no recently sold listings or even currently listings for the DLC version of this knife. Your price on this one? $225 like it is. $260 if you like my edge on that Tonto Blade in M4. That's in your inventory as Spyderco Paratu Tonto Jade DLC M4. Next up, the Spyderco and Paramilitary 2 party rolls on. This one says Paramilitary 2 O-D-O-R. You know what it is, don't you? It's of two minds. Oh, this is the Cutlery Shop exclusive. Orange and OD. CPM Rex 45 Paramilitary 2. One of my favorite steels. It's close to M4 in my mind. And how much I love it. And you can tell how grind resistant it is. You can like see the evidence of the efforts to put a satin finish on it. It does not like to be ground. I'm feeling just a hair of side play, but I'm, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that for you right now. Let's see. I think. Oh, there we go. Uh-huh. There. There it's gone. So you're going to have to choose between free dropping and zero play on this one. And let's see. There we go. That's better. Centering on this one, perfect. Wearing a Casey Lynch satin finish deep carry titanium clip. We'll call it near mint to like new. Clip noted. These are discontinued, not a stock. I found two sold listings on eBay. Two, and they were within a dollar of each other. One was at 264 shipped. The other one, 265 shipped. This one, 230 like it is, 260 with my edge. Spider Copera 2, OROD Rex 45. Next up, another Spider Co. from Golden and another Paramilitary 2. This is Black Blade OD Green Handle and an S90V blade. So there's your black DLC blade, all your black hardware. Wearing a long black coated titanium deep carry clip from Casey Lynch. Not quite a free dropper. And the blade's perfectly centered. Rock solid lockup. <clears throat> These were a DLT exclusive and they are out of stock. One sold listing on eBay for this exact knife. It did 315. This one can be yours at 210, like it is. 240 if you'd like it to come with an Apostle P edge and next day sharpening is available. That's the Spider Copair 2 OD DLC S90V. Next up, we have another Spider Co, but not a paramilitary 2, although it is made. Oh, we get the wrong label. So it's a wrong box knife. It's made in Golden, Colorado. It's a Manix 2 lightweight with the orange FRN scales and a blade in S90V. This was a cutlery shop exclusive. On the Manix 2 lightweight, you've got three and three eighths inches of S90V four and five eighths handle the caged ball lock uh -huh. operates a lot like an axis lock maybe not quite as slickly as an axis lock kind of have to use both fingers rock solid lockup a free drop and blade and the centering i'm calling uh you can call it perfect i guess might favor the top ever so slightly. 
near mint in box. And the reason I didn't call it like new, there's one tiny little, tiny little rust spot on the S90V. It should be an easy flit. It doesn't look like there's a pit associated with it. In fact, I think I just obliterated it with my fingernail. Yeah. Oh, rock solid lockup, by the way. Uh, discontinued, not a stock. I was a little shocked. There were several of these in the eBay sold listings. Can they really be worth 250 to 285? I don't think so. <clears throat> not at all. Let's do 150 on this one. 180 if you like it with an Apostle Piage. That's the Manix 2 lightweight, orange, and S90V. Next up, this is an interesting one. From Benchmade, black class knife, the 5370 BK-04 shootout. So this is an interesting knife. That handle, it's, it's a version of red. It's almost a tomato red. Right? So here it is next to orange, and here it is next to red. You tell me. So I, these are like a limited production seasonal colorway or something I read in the ad copy. So you got that tomato red, grivery handle, beautifully textured. You got kind of a a radiating diamond pattern back here and like a gun grip stippling up here, which is super grippy. You've got the Parkerized Benchmade deep carry clip that's ambidextrous, tip down, which seems like tip up. You've got, looks like a black hard anodized aluminum exposed lanyard mount, spine mounted button on the double action OTF automatic. DLC coated Tonto, or is it Cerakote? I'm not sure. I don't know. Could be either. CPM crew wears your blade. A good looking Tonto with a slight bit of belly in both edge runs. Three and a half inches in length, four and 15 sixteenths handle. Medium button effort. Faster than an Infidel, not as fast as a Microtech. Nice button. I mean, you can really get purchase on it. Not only from the jimping, but from the geometry. 100% reliable. Condition near mint in box. Currently available at Knife Center for $250 or just by this one. All in shipped priority mail, $210. Which I think is $10 cheaper than we sold the ugly mint green one for last week. Hmm. <laughs> $240 if you'd like my edge on the crew wear blade. It's the Benchmade 5370 BK-04 Shootout OTF Automatic Red and Crew Wear. Next up, our second and final Benchmade in tonight's sale. Another black class knife. It is the 273 GY-1 Mini Adamas. So if you don't like, you know, green and FDE, well, you have this option. Black G10. Deep carry Parkerized ambidextrous tip up clip. Beautifully 3D machine and satin finish G10. Thumb studs and phosphor bronze washers. A sparkly gray Cerakote. First production run knife, by the way. CPM crew wears your blade steel. 3 and 3 16 blade, 4.5 handle. For a short knife, it's super beefy. It's got the Heavy axis lock mechanism. So if you look at the diameter of the axis bar and the stop pin, larger than normal bench made. Lock up, dead rock solid. Very near free dropping action. Blade centering, well, it's, uh, it's perfect. Condition, near mint, you know, I wrote very close. Well, is it very close? Man, that looks perfect this morning. It might be off a little. Anywho, near mint inbox. Current map price web retail for this knife, brand new, $261. let us do $185 like it is. $210 if you'd like my edge on it. 
Next day sharpening is available, by the way. The Benchmade 273 GY-1 Mini Adamas. Next up, Microtech time, boys. Yeah. Here we go. We have a Model 142-1 RD Combat Truodon Double Edge in red. There you go. A large double action OTF. Five and 11 sixteenths inches of handle from tip to tip. Spine mounted firing button. It is a firm button. The blade M390. Gorgeous double edge blade. Tiny little bit of satin on that center flat. Black everywhere else, double edge, full plain edge on both. Serial number 27946, born 5 of 2020. There is a little bit of handle wear right at the front, right there. So we're going to call it near mint in box. By the way, the blade length, 3 and 3 quarters inches, I think I forgot to mention Currently in stock at PVK for $550. You can own this one though with one little nick in the front of the handle. $425 like it is. No need to sharpen. The Red Combat Truodon Double Edge from Microtech. Next up, know your eyes are not deceiving you. We have another Microtech, another Combat Truodon. Whoa, two of them in the same sale. This is the Tato Edge model 144-1 MR because it has a Merlot handle. Yeah, check that out. We used to call that Burgundy back in the 70s because we hadn't heard of Merlot yet. But anyway, hard anodized aluminum handle. 5 and 11 16 tip to tip. Large double action. OTF automatic spine mounted firing button, which is firm, but 100% reliable. If you are a woman and you want to buy a knife for your husband, buy him this one because he will not be able to keep this up for the entire length of a movie because it is a firm button. It'll wear your thumb out. It's not a fidgeter. It's a purpose built tool, right? So, blade steel CTS 204P, blade length three and three quarters. Serial number 30387, born 10 of 2020. And there is very, very slight handle wear right at this top corner. It's hard to even see it. So, yeah. Uh, these would have been about 550, but they're long gone in this colorway. Uh, a sold listing on Arizona Custom Knives, 450. That's not sure how long ago that was. Your price on this one's going to be 425, like it is in 460. If you would like my edge on it, that's the Microtech 144-1 MR Combat Truodon Tanto Edge in Merlot. Next up, we have a hinder, and I teased you guys pretty heavily about this yesterday. What is it? That looks like an Eclipse or an XM18 box, doesn't it? Well, it's not. This is the Nieves Balasong Spanto in Battle Bronze. Look at that, guys. So Battle Bronze would be the handle finish which is like a bronze anodized working finish. Nice latch, although it doesn't exactly drop out when you squeeze the handle. <coughs> Handles all titanium, including the latch. And that spanto is very subtle. I think you can see the demarcation between the two grinds, but very cool. And I would call it a clanto. Because that's not really a spear point. It's really a clip point. But anyway, 
Who's counting? Uh, let's see. I gotta turn my page, guys. Okay. We've got a blade of CPMS 35VN, four and five eighths inches in length. The handle is five and three eighths. I, you know, the, this feels like bearings, but I couldn't really see. I couldn't see any gaps between the balls, so they must be well caged. And look at this, guys. There is zero side play. That is all just flex. There's not any hint. That's beautifully made. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how it flips. I am not a Balasong guy. But it's pretty cool. Very near mint in box. Discontinued and out of stock when they were available. They had a web retail of 410, I believe. Let's do 350 on this one. 375 if you'd like it with my edge. That's too cheap. But anyway, that's what it is. The Hinder Nieves Spanto Balasong. Next up, if you are a Cold Steel fan and you just love to get your hands on any Cold Steel you can, especially if it has a bit of character, you're going to love this knife. It's from the Voyager series. And it is the Chris Voyager. Just look at that blade. I would not want that thing attacking my flesh. I'm just saying. And it's a big one. It is a big one. Look at that. So you've got your sort of standard new style textured FRN handle. All the Voyagers have. You've got ambidextrous tip-up clips, and there are two of them. The other one's in the box because they're curved. Oh, my. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at that thing. The grinds are unbelievable. You know, not only do you have undulations in this way, but even in this axis, you can see them. And as you run your finger over it, they rise and fall. I don't... That's amazing, guys. Aus 10A blade, five and a quarter inches long. It's got the XL Voyager handle that is six and three quarters inches in length. You come all the way back to here. Oh, guys. Uh, rock solid lockup. Beautiful free action, phosphor bronze and Teflon. Centering is very close. It's kind of hard to see in there because that blade really takes a dive into the blade well. Like new in box. You can buy this knife right now. Actually, yesterday was Prime Day. I'm not sure if it's still this price on Amazon, but yesterday it was $61 on Amazon. This one can be yours. 40 bucks. No need. To, well, I'm not going to say no need to sharpen, but I ain't going to do it. <laughs> it would cost as much as the knife if I were even going to do that. I mean, I. It's not a slicer. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure what it is, but it's cool. It's cold steel cool. 40 bucks, no sharpening. Next up, we have the Lone Rayot in tonight's sale. This is an original version EXO or XO in marble carbon fiber and a 3V blade. Comes in a nicely made black split grain leather slip that is belt attachable and here's the knife <clears throat> this particular configuration was a dlt exclusive it looks like these are very light bronzy anno on the titanium with beautiful marbled carbon fiber inlays with a little bit of milling uh-huh there you go so the XO, as you guys mostly probably know, is a gravity knife. So you split the handle, blade slides. Close the handle, blade don't slide. Split the handle, blade slides. And this does not have the lock, the original version. Beautiful two-tone on that 3V. Acid stone wash, bevel and swedge, and then horizontal satin flats. Blade length is three and three quarters. The handle is five and an eighth. No clip. Just makes cool noises too. 
I think. Mm -hmm. We'll put you back in your little home. Anyhow, discontinued and out of stock. When these were available at DLT, they were $282. This one is near mint in box, and it can be yours for $200 shipped priority mail. $225 if you'd like my edge on it. Next day sharpening is available. The Rayat EXO Marble Carbon Fiber and 3V. Next up. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, oh, oh. We have one from the Pena X series. It's got a long name. Swayback Bolstered Jigged Titanium. Yeah. Pretty interesting knife. Kind of a traditional knife pattern, you know, when you look at the envelope. But very much a modern folder. Titanium handle. Scales and backspacer. You have sort of a faux bolster with <laughs> milling to look like pick bone. It's pretty cool. It is a front flipper, which I will not embarrass myself with. Warncliffe blade with a hollow grind in Pena's preferred steel M390. Two and seven eighths inches of blade, three and five eighths inches of handle. Titanium frame lock with steel inserted lock face. Right hand tip up milled titanium pocket clip. Rock solid lock up. Beautiful ball bearing action. Perfect blade centering. Condition near meant to like new in box. These are out of stock in the new market. When they were available, they had a web retail of 274. Let's do this one at 210 like it is. 240 if you'd like my edge on it. Next day sharpening is available. The Pena X Series Swayback bolstered in jig titanium. Next up, a very interesting knife. <clears throat> From W.R. Case and Sons. Check it out. Mm -hmm. It is the Longhouse. <clears throat> Aluminum handle with black burlap micarta. Hmm. Doesn't sound like a case knife. Doesn't look like a case knife. Very interesting. Uh -huh. Black burlap. Aluminum frame with integral bolsters. An aluminum backspacer. Deep carry right hand tip up clip. It is a front flipper. I will definitely not embarrass myself with this one. Kind of a harpoon clip point blade. First production run. And the blade steel is CPM 20 CV. Etched right there. Let's see if I can get you a shot of that. <clears throat> blade length. <clears throat> three inches. Excuse me. Handle four and a sixteenth. Stainless steel liner lock. I believe it's got a ball bearing pivot. There's your lock engagement and it is rock solid. And there's your blade centering, which is perfect. Near meant to like new in box. Web retail for these 169. Let's do 110 on this one and then 140. If you like my edge on that 20 CV blade, that is the case longhouse. Next up, <clears throat> a very interesting knife <clears throat> from Spyderco. Para 3 carbon fiber in 52100. PS, what does that mean? Hmm. <clears throat> There's your peel ply carbon fiber, black spidey clip, three inch blade. In 52100 and a combo edge. <clears throat> the handle, four and a quarter. So this was a very limited edition, exclusive to one distributor, HL Dallas. 
So it is, I'm going to call it near mint in box. There's a little patina from fingerprints right here. It is 52100. I would say those will flits off. Lock up rock solid. Action free dropping. A little bit of lock stick, but nothing. Nothing you need to worry about. Yeah. Centering is Come on. I think it's about perfect. <clears throat> They're discontinued, not a stock. One sold listing on eBay, no current listings, and that one that sold did 314. Normally, a combo edge doesn't help the value of knife, but I think we're looking at a pretty rare piece. Uh, we're not going to ask you to pay 314, though. Let's do 225 like it is, 250 with an Apostle P edge. On the Spyderco Pair 3 Carbon Fiber and 52100. Next up, I don't think I've ever seen this model and just a few from this company from Kunwu Knives. We have a Pulsar. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Diamond milled titanium scales. Tip up ambidextrous milled titanium pocket clip with a fill tab on the offside. The lock looks a lot like an axis lock. Kunwu calls it the XT lock. Whoops. Blade is on ball bearings. You can open it with the triangular hole or you can just fling it. Blade steel on the Pulsar is LMAX. I believe it's etched right there. There. Uh huh. Blade length, 3 and 3 eighths. Handle, 4 and 5 sixteenths. Rock solid lockup. Free swing in action. Perfect blade centering. It is near meant to like new in box. These are out of stock when they were available. They had a web retail of $239. Let's offer this one at $150 like it is. $180 with my edge. That's the Kunwu Knives Pulsar. Next up, <clears throat> we have a flashlight from Olight. And it's the i3T Plus Limited Edition in Ancient Bamboo. Now this is strange, guys. Now, I read a lot of copy about this light, and they talk about how the the pattern of of uh, texturing the handle makes everyone different. And I could find nowhere where it told me that material, but it looks like a solid copper with an antiquing. It's very cool. You've got a two-way pocket clip, clicky switch on the tail, two modes. Two fifty lumens and fifteen lumens. It uses three AAA batteries. It's near mint to like new in box. When these were available, they were fifty bucks web retail. They are gone, and they're a limited edition. Let's do thirty-five bucks on this one. No need to sharpen the Olight i three T plus and ancient bamboo. Next up, it's watch time. The first one from a brand I really, really like but don't own. Scurfa, an English company <clears throat> founded by a real diver. And he makes watches for real divers. And the watch we have, it's kind of the OG Scurfa. It's the Diver 1. And I think it's original configuration, black aluminum bezel insert, black dial, big hunks <clears throat> of loom application, 40 millimeter case diameter, 49 lug to lug, 13 thick, 20 millimeter lug width. There's a 
helium escape valve at nine o'clock. Screw on, screw down case back, screw down crown. 200 meters of water resistance. The bezel is 120 click unidirectional. Great sound, great feel. <clears throat> I don't think it quite lines up. <clears throat> I think it's about a third of a click to the one o'clock side and you're lift, if you're looking at 12 o'clock. Single dome sapphire crystal with AR coating. It appears to be a very thick crystal judging by the distortion you get. Wearing the factory black rubber strap, and they want you to know genuine rubber. And it's also going to come with a navy blue factory strap. I'm not sure they've sold this configuration of the no date. And it is a Swiss quartz movement, by the way. Uh, so pricing these is a little tough. There are some hairlines in it, very fine but very near mint, I would say. Let's do 185 shipped priority mail on the Scurfa Diver One Quartz Dive Watch. Next up, another watch. It's a Seiko. Nothing special, just a SARB035, the cream dial version of the legendary Sarb. Check it out. 38 and a half millimeter case diameter <clears throat> cream dial with a little bit of sunray a little almost a little mother of pearl thing going on there 316 l stainless steel case brushed lug tops polished bezel polished sides display case back showing off the rather pedestrian 6r15 movement 38 and a half millimeter diameter, 45 lug to lug, about 11 and a half thick, 20 millimeter lug width, wearing the factory oyster style bracelet, which is in pretty fine shape. Look at the clasp. Very little desk rash. I mean, very slight. There's some hairlines on the bezel that would take about, you know, five minutes to fix if you wanted to. Date at three. Beautiful dial. I did fire this one up about 24 hours ago. It's been sitting dial up. It's about minus six seconds per day. Um, sold listings on eBay for nice examples like this one. Between 511 and 630. This one can be yours, 450. Shipped priority mail. The Seiko SARB035 automatic watch. Next up, we have uh, an item we are going to call the Lynch Northwest Titanium Deep Carry Clips and Screws. <clears throat> so in this pouch, we have three clips. This one is a two screw deep carry with a little bit of wear on it. Let's see if I can get the camera to pick that up. There you go. Then I have two, <clears throat> three screw clips. They're both, eh, they look brand new. <clears throat> so you get those three clips. And then in this pouch, we've got one, two, three, four screws and an Allen wrench that we can use for swapping clips. So I don't know how much these are, <clears throat> but let's say, uh, eh, let's say 45 bucks for all that. <clears throat> Three clips, some extra screws and a wrench, <clears throat> 45 bucks. The Lynch Northwest Titanium Deep Carry Clips and Screws. Next up. Another combo deal. This will be in your inventory as watch strap combo number one. <clears throat> We're going to start it off with, oh, a Colareb Roma strap. 
I don't know what they call it. I'm going to call it distressed leather. I believe this is a 20 millimeter strap. Let me verify that because I think I forgot to measure it. It is. Uh -huh. So you've got the cream stitching, the distressed leather. And then we've got a couple of fabric straps. Kind of a standard black 20 millimeter NATO. And then we have an elastic strap. Just a, uh, maybe it's not elastic, but there's a little bit of give to that weave. A single pass, let's call it a Zulu. Also in 20 millimeter, interesting pattern. Mm -hmm. So for all three of those, and let's say most of the value obviously is going to be in that Cola Reb, let's do 50 bucks for all three of those, all 20 millimeter stuff. Next up, we have watch strap combo number two. The star of this party is this black embossed strap, a little bit of padding, and it is from Hirsch. I believe the model is the Highland. It's 20 millimeters. Beautiful polished buckle with the Hirsch signature. I own a very similar Hearst strap. <clears throat> Those sell new for about 50, 55 bucks. Then you're gonna get a 20 millimeter Bond NATO. Nice fabric. I'm not sure whose that is. Let's see. Unbranded. Brushed hardware. It's kind of like seat belt nylon. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Go back in your little home. And then you're going to have one 20 millimeter gray NATO and more of a standard NATO nylon fabric. Oh, you put that in the wrong way. Uh -huh. I lost my blue thing. Who cares? And then we got this. This is a hybrid <clears throat> black leather. And it's either like a tan or an OD canvas. Single pass strap. And... Guys, I'm not sure the maker's mark. You guys might. But you're going to get all those. Let me put you back. You get the leather and canvas hybrid. You get the Bond NATO. You get the gray NATO. And you get the Hirsch. All of them. <clears throat> 60 bucks ship priority mail. That's kind of a buy. Let's watch strap combo number two. Next up, we got a combo I'm going to call the Gents Combo. It consists of a key bar <clears throat> and a Cuban Crafters cigar cutter. <clears throat> So let's look at the key bar. <clears throat> this is the titanium model. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get all your spacers and screws. And I don't know how much this holds, but it's a little uh, USB key drive. Okay. So <clears throat> if you buy this key bar new, uh, the titanium version is 39 bucks plus the key drive, which I don't, those are, I don't know, 10 bucks. <clears throat> so let's say you got $49 of value there. 
And then, let me put this back in his baggie. And then you have the Cuban Crafters Cigar Cutter. <clears throat> and it is the 23 millimeter version in stainless. Uh -huh. And those are about 25 bucks brand new. So I don't know, you got $74 or something. If you, and these are like new, by the way. Let's do, uh, let's do 50 bucks shipped priority mail all in for the gents combo. <clears throat> Next up we have the Rob's pick in tonight's sale. <clears throat> this will totally not surprise you. From Chris Reeve. We have a large Sebenza 21 PJ drop point. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. S35VN, October of 2019 is your born on date. <clears throat> Here's the knife. You'll notice it is not wearing a lanyard and there is no lanyard present, although the post is. It is not wearing a clip but it has a fill tab. The clip is in the box. Notice the handle looks brand new. This knife was basically never carried. You can see a little wear on the top of the thumb stunt. It's been fidgeted with a little bit. And at some point in the past, it came to me and I applied the Apostle P Edge, which has never cut anything. Let's see. Near free dropper. It's been a long time since I tuned this. It's been sitting in the box. Let's see. Without the clip to anchor on. A little hard to flick. <clears throat> it is very near mint in box. Uh, what are these now? Five twenty-five new, and then it's got thirty or thirty-five dollars of my work and a fill tab. And they don't make them anymore. And it's the best Sabenza ever made. Sorry, 31, it ain't you. Let's do $450. No, need to sharpen. The Chris Reeve Large Sabenza 21 PJ with an Apostle P Edge, the Rob's pick tonight. Oh, the centering's perfect, by the way. Next up, Spider Co. Paramilitary 2 Red, it says. It is the DLT exclusive Red Paratooth, the M390 blade. Polished clip, bright hardware, compression lock, beautiful action, M390. Let's see. Free dropper. Perfectly centered. Lock up. Dead rock solid. <clears throat> Condition. Near mint in box. Why did I not call it like new? I don't know. It's got all of its original parts. I mean, it could be like new. I see nothing. Anyhow. <clears throat> Long out of stock, by the way. Sold listings on eBay range between 200 for a turd, 300 for a nice one. This one is priced less than the turd. 195 like it is. 225 with an Apostle P.I. Spider Co. Pair 2 Red M390. Next up, the coolest knife in the sale. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Spider Co. Made in USA. Paramilitary 2, CF, and M4. I mean, uh, does it get any better than that? Peel ply carbon fiber scales. Grippy. Bright hardware polished clip. Compression lock. An opening hole on phosphor bronze washers and a blade in CPM M4. Not a mark on it. A little bit of oil. Let's see. 
hydraulically free dropping, rock solid lockup, blade centering is perfect, condition <clears throat> like new in box, sprint run, long discontinued, not a stock, sold listings on eBay are none, <coughs> current listings on eBay, several of them, all of, our, all of them are buy it nows. <clears throat> ranging between three twenty-five and four ninety-nine. Uh, you're not going to find a nicer one than this. Your price two ninety-five, like it is, three twenty-five with an Apostle Piage Spider Co. Pair two CFM four. Next up, ooh, ooh, a knife I like to call. The 44 Magnum Gunstock. It's the Tidute <coughs> Cutlery of Great Eastern Cutlery. Number 44 Buffalo Jack, model 441218 in Gabon Ebony Wood. <clears throat> Comes with a button and a knife. Nickel, silver bolsters and end caps. Chamfered. Gabon Ebony. Hot dog shield. Uh, <clears throat> three and nine sixteenths inches of closed length. An eight pole on the clip point main. Drawn swedge nail nick. Beautiful clip point in 1095. Beautiful walk and talk. Big usable pen blade. Patty's potato peelers is the etch. Both blades are centered. Condition will be near mint in tube with button. One sole listing on eBay at $230, <clears throat> and that knife looked rough. Your price on this one is $210, but there's something I don't think I told you about. Uh, catch the light off the edge. Yes, this is wearing my edge, and it has never cut anything since I sharpened it. $210 with an Apostle P edge. That's the GEC Titty number 44 Buffalo Jack TAP for the Apostle P. Next up, another one from the Titty line of Great Eastern Cutlery. This is like the third one of these we've sold in the last four weeks. <clears throat> 68 Pony Jack model 681221 in Coca Bolo. with a button. The wood is so beautiful, Bill decided no shield on these. Gorgeous Coca-Bolo. All steel construction. I just like the way, not only I think it's more durable than nickel silver, but the steel takes a polish so deep. Better than nickel silver. Both blades are on cam tangs with about a seven pull. Closed length is three and seven sixteenths. Main clip, look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. A titty knife with a cut swedge and a long pull. Pony jack etch. Near side pen blade. Nice walk and talk. And both blades are centered. Condition very near mint in tube with button. Your price 165 like it is 195 with my edge on both blades. The GEC Titty number 68 Pony Jack. <clears throat> <coughs> that brings us to the last knife in tonight's sale. Comes in a beautiful pouch. No box, but a beautiful pouch. Now, this is a semi-custom from Battle Horse Knives. If, it is a, if it's a regular production model, I don't see it on their website. So I don't know what to call it. I'm just going to call it a Battle Horse Knives semi-custom. Comes in a BHK branded fold-over sheath. It looks, there's an interesting feature on the sheath. There's a hole here and a corresponding hole. I can find it. 
uh, on the other side, right behind it. I think you could tie those two holes together and shorten your belt loop. So you could convert it from a low carry to a high carry. Pretty cool. Inside, you got this. Looks like 1 8 stock, a very sharp 90 degree spine. It is 01 steel and it has had a patina forced by the owner and he did a super job. It looks a lot like the Winkler Caswell, actually. Black canvas micarta scales. The uh, brass nuts with the aluminum screws. Brass lanyard tube. Really, really nice in the hand. Three and seven eighths blade and a four inch handle. And the O1 just took that like beautifully. And of course, it has not been resharpened after the force patina. So you may want to think seriously about having me put an edge on it because it's going to be pretty unstable because that's oxidized material at the edge. Near mint in pouch. Your price on a very nice battle horse. 140 like it is 165 with my edge. The Battle Horse Knives Semi-Custom. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another weekly knife sale on the Apostle P channel. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Grace to you. And peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. Now commence to clicking.